Well, we're in the week of the IMF spring meetings and already a lot has been happening that's uh, quite interesting. Yesterday morning, the, um, uh, the World Economic Outlook team uh, gave its press conference and the outlook in their projections is uh, really quite uh, benign for uh, 2015. The advanced countries' uh, growth rates are speeding up actually somewhat significantly as they project it, while the emerging market economies are slowing down. The issue really there, though, is what are the downside risks? Uh, we are in a situation where there is a significant inconsistency between uh, the monetary policies of key economies, the U.S., uh, the uh, Euro Eurozone, and, um, and Japan, uh, and the regulatory environment. So monetary policy continues to encourage risk taking. The regulatory environment is um, encouraging a very significant withdrawal from risk at the core of the global financial system. And I think this inconsistency pushes the risks out into the periphery of the global financial system where they're harder to recognize and deal with. So this is a downside risk. We don't know how clear it is. Uh, evidently, the work that is being done, uh, including at the fund, to try to identify emerging uh, financial system-wide uh, uh, vulnerabilities is, is really strengthening. So I think this is the area to watch. We're going to see major structural changes in banking systems. Uh, certainly in North America and particularly in Europe over the next few years. And I think those are the things that need to be uh, watched from the point of view of governance of the global financial system. We've also had just this morning uh, a uh, really fascinating talk by Klaus Regling on the lessons learned from the Euro crisis in a uh, meeting sponsored by CG and the Peterson Institute here in Washington. And Klaus Regling has, uh, I think, really demonstrated the deep reforms that have taken place in Europe, not only in the countries that have seen uh, problems with crisis, but in the broader community. And one of the points that he made that I think is particularly important is that if countries can successfully go through a major period of restructuring as uh, the peripheral countries are doing in, uh, in Europe. Uh, and if the structural measures are carried out, which they are being carried out, they tend to really strengthen productivity and competitiveness and make these uh, economies quite dynamic in the longer term. So I hope that conclusion, which is an optimistic one, is right. But it's clearly uh, a vote of confidence in deep structural reforms as a uh, long-term solution to financial and structural crises.